Right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to follow on from the YouTube live that I did yesterday and talk about some of the new traffic diversification methods that I'm experimenting with right now. Some of them are already generating leads and sales. I'll get into that in a second. And if you want to get access to some of the playbooks that we're giving you, check out the link in the comments and description. Make sure you subscribe. Let's get straight into it. So there's basically three things that I'm testing right now, which is Facebook ads. And I'll get into that in a second. Pinterest and Flipboard. Now inside this video as well, a lot of people are asking me for my link building outreach template. So I'm going to give that away in a second, but essentially we're going to run through my playbook and the experiments that we're using for each of these methods. So Facebook ads, Pinterest and Flipboard to get traffic. And then I'm also going to share with you some of the best outreach templates that we've got for link building and getting backlinks organically for free. So let's talk about Facebook ads. Now, I tweeted about this yesterday, and the reason that I'm running traffic diversification for experiments right now is because, number one, I think they're super important, but number two, so many people got hit by the court update. You can see out of 700 votes, 50% of people said that the latest Google court update was brutal, right? And so I want to share some new experiments and tests that I'm running to get more traffic to my website, to make more money, etc., so that you can learn, and hopefully it helps you along the way. So the first method that I'm going to talk about is Facebook ads, and I'm going to run you through my funnel and exactly how it works. So basically what I'm doing right now is experimenting with an old campaign that we used to run, but making a few tweaks along the day. You can see how much we're spending per day on Facebook ads. We're spending $200 a day. These campaigns have already generated thousands of appointments and schedules and that sort of thing. And we're just running ads with different creatives, testing them to our funnels that already work. So, right. So this is our SEO strategy funnel, and you can do this for any business, any website, anything that you're selling, right? Good work for info products, for e-commerce, etc. Obviously the more competitive and the more high ticket the service is that you're selling. So for example, in this situation, we're an SEO agency, we sell link building, and therefore it's number one, very competitive, but number two is a higher ticket product, right? so we can afford to spend more on Facebook ads. But if you were just selling like a $7 tripwire ad, you might not need to spend $200 daily. You could probably get away with spending like, I don't know, $50 or so, something like that. You can see all these different campaigns we've run over the years, along with how much it's cost per lead or per sales call, et cetera, on the right over here. So we've tested and tweaked a lot of things. And I'm just going to share what's working for us right now. So you can see, so you can see we've got over 3 million impressions over here in terms of reach generated thousands of leads, sales calls, etc., And we're going to guide you through the whole process. And by the way, if you want to get access to the Facebook ads creative that's actually working for us, because obviously we have loads of different campaigns, you could try going directly to our ads account on Facebook ads library. The thing is like, we've got so many different campaigns running with so many different ads copy, you won't know what's working. So what I've actually done is for the ad that's actually working, I've included it inside this document right here. And you can see the ads copy. So you can get access to my free course and that has examples of Facebook ads copy that's actually working right now. So what we're essentially doing is using the ads copy, sending it to a sales page like this. Then people fill in the details, for example, like the website, what they're looking for, how life will change, how much they're willing to spend. And we can automatically filter out anyone who's not willing to spend a certain amount. Then from there, They'll choose when they want to get started. And once that's done, they can book in a slot right here. So for example, they could go with 3.30 PM, select that date, and then there's an opt-in. Someone asked me about this as well yesterday about booking calls and, and opt-ins and that sort of thing. So what we actually do is we have this checkbox. It's actually built inside Go High Level. So Go High Level is our CRM for building these funnels. And it says, like, I confirm that I want to receive content from this company using any contact information I provide. So they put in their phone number, email address, et cetera. And by the way, if you do want a free SEO strategy session, feel free to book that in. But that's basically how the whole funnel works. And then after that, they will receive a show up campaign to make sure they actually jump on the call. Let me show you that in a second so you can get ideas. Now, if you're selling a product directly, you would just send them to a product page. If you're selling an info product, you can send them to an info product page or an opt in page. If you actually have something where you need them to show up, I know a lot of people watching this sell services, for example, then what you're going to find with Facebook ads is that typically it's going to be a lower shop rate than your organic meetings, right? So if we get a SEO strategy session booked from YouTube, the show up rate is going to be far lower than if we get a strategy session booked in from Facebook ads because 
this is a cold audience, where it's, for example, on YouTube, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook groups, on the email list, etc. That's a warm audience. And that's the biggest difference that you'll notice. So what you can see here is our show up campaign funnel. And we just send some email reminders, plus get people warmed up before the call so they're more likely to show up. You can see we send the SMS to make sure they'll actually show up for the call there. And that's basically how it works step by step. You can see quite a high open rate when it comes to booking in the call. And obviously, we don't track the stats on SMS. But yeah, works really nicely. And then you can see we send an email after five minutes, after one day, after one day, etc. Now, what you'll typically find is like when you're trying to funnel hack a business, and I'm being completely transparent with you, I know like a few thousand people probably see this. Usually, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? So most people are just so focused on trying to get traffic from SEO that they don't think beyond that. And if you want to make a lot of money at scale, what I'd recommend is that you work more on the back end than the front end. Because, for example, the email funnels that you have, the SMS that you send, the information you send someone before the call, the systems, the people you hire, etc. This is typically going to make you way more money than just getting the SEO traffic itself. So that's basically what we're doing from Facebook ads. And like I say, inside my free course, you can see an example of high converting Facebook ad copy and creative that's working really well in this document. And then additionally, if you want to see an example of the email templates that we send to make sure people buy from us, then I've also included that inside the section as well. And if you want access to that, links in the comments and the description to the free SEO course. Now, some people are asking me about outreach templates for getting backlinks and what's worked for us. So what I've actually done is created this document right here. So these are done for you outreach templates to get more backlinks. If you want to get access to that, I've left it inside the Facebook ad section right here. I'll just show you some examples. So this was for an old website of ours called relaxlikeaboss.com. You can see an example of the subject line, how we tailored it to our niche and our industry, etc. You can see like all the puns and that sort of thing we included. And we actually sent that via, it was Lem. So if you want more backlinks, you want to see examples of what worked for us, here's an example. You could probably spin it through ChatGPT and actually tailor it to whatever industry or website you have. So for example, you could just give ChatGPT your niche, the name of your website, etc., the owner of the website, and then just spin that through ChatGPT and actually rewrite it. And that probably worked quite well. Additionally, what you can see here, is some follow-up emails that we use to send. And typically we tend to get most backlinks from follow-up emails. And then we've got these outreach email templates right here. Again, I wouldn't recommend using these exact ones, but I'd recommend using them for inspiration so that you can get more backlinks to your site. That's essentially how it works step-by-step step, based on sending like thousands of outreach emails at this point. So we've talked about Facebook ads so far and what we're doing and how the whole funnel works. And like I said, we run an ad then people book in a call, they qualify on the application form using Go High Level, and then they get a show up email funnel. Now, when it comes to Facebook ads as well, you might say which ad stats are the most important. This is from what I've learned. So these are the three things that we focus on. So click-through rate, cost per click, and cost per mil, right? So like cost per thousand people that see the ad. And these are the sort of benchmarks we go for. So like anything less than 0.7%, it's a bit of a problem. We want to improve the ad copy and the creative. Basically aim for a 1% or higher click-through rate. And if you're looking at cost per click, you want to typically aim for less $1. But again, this changes industry to industry, niche to niche, depends what you're selling, etc. And then cost per mil as well. Now, for me, for example, as an SEO agency, it's going to be more expensive because it's more competitive. These are the sort of benchmarks that I learned. Now, what I'm also doing is building out a Pinterest board, as you can see right here. And then I'm, I'm going to have a virtual assistant who publishes about 10 to 20 different pins per day, maybe across multiple boards as well. I want to see how much we need to scale this to get traffic from Pinterest. And it might not even be substantial. Like the whole experiment might completely fail, but that's a good sign of an experiment. And the reason that I'm doing this is, again, because I want to help people like you. Now, what I've actually found is it's incredibly easy to actually add pins and it's easy to get a virtual assistant to help you. Right? So for example, you can see this headline right here is already clickbaited on YouTube. It's got a nice image right there. It's already got the description and it sends traffic to a funnel that's already making us money, right? And so over time, as we pin more stuff to our board, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if it's going to work, but to see whether this process is actually working. And if there's any Pinterest experts watching and you want to be interviewed on the channel, just let me know. Feel free to message me at me at juliangoldie.com and we'll do an interview together. 
The other thing that I would say with Pinterest is obviously you can get traffic directly from the platform. You might need to run ads, but we'll test that as well. And then you can see over time that Pinterest is just one of those websites that's just performing better and better when it comes to SEO. So hopefully we can rank some of these Pinterest boards or pins. We can get more traffic from the platform. And over time, these sort of websites, YouTube, Pinterest, etc., just seem to be performing better and better. The final method that we're using to get more traffic is with Flipboard as well. This is just another experiment. I don't know if it's going to work, people. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just seeing if it's going to work. This is actually after watching Niche Pursuits interview on Flipboard recently. You can see this interview right here. It was really good, actually. Got some actionable tips from there. And if we go to my Flipboard right here, you can see we just started yesterday. But what I've got is a virtual assistant, again, posting 10 flips a day. So they're going to start from today, start posting those, and then we'll track the data in the analytics of the video and see if we actually get any traffic from this. Now, what's interesting about Flipboard from what I saw in that interview is one of those sites where people go to discover content. So it's not actually against bloggers or against YouTubers or sending external traffic to other websites yet, which is going to be interesting as a traffic experiment. It might totally fail, but if it works out for traffic, we'll share it more on the channel. I didn't even know people were still using Flipboard, honestly. So that is three different traffic diversification methods that we've talked about. We're already getting good results with Facebook ads. And if you want to get the copy, the creative, if you want to get the email template, and if you want to get my outreach templates for link building, feel free to get that link it's in the comments and description to my free SEO course. And if you want to book in a free SEO strategy session about how to get more leads, traffic and sales from SEO, we'll give you a custom tailored SEO domination plan. You'll discover the secrets of SEO link building. We'll answer any questions you have. You'll learn the best link building strategy for your website. You'll learn how to quickly outrank your competitors with link building. And you'll discover how to 10x your SEO traffic using SEO. So feel free to book that in. Links in the comments and description. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. So I'm going to go through some of the latest questions and comments that we actually got. So one of them was from Samir who said, is building an online directory still a valid option? So this is quite interesting because our rank and rent local SEO sites that kind of like just directory sites are performing better than ever, right? Like it's absolutely crazy, very easy. I can't really share that directly on YouTube because of what happened with the whole clapping in situation. If you want to hear more about that, join the mastermind links in the comments. And but yeah, all I can say is that local directories are performing better than ever. As a good example of that, if we check out Clutch, you can see their traffic over time as a directory website is working better than ever. So I still think this is still a really good option for monetizing your site. Very easy to rank with local SEO and then you can just rank for whatever local SEO keywords you want to. So for example, plumbers or SEO agencies or marketing agencies or whatever you want. The sound session says, this is gold. And mentioned that Go High Level works really well. Yeah, I'm absolutely loving Go High Level right now. Really powerful way to get more opt-ins and to build an ecosystem essentially that converts. And like I said, most of the money you're going to make as a website is on the back end, not the front end. Now they also ask, okay, question that's kind of gray hat. We have tens of thousands of niche specific emails from leads we've generated for clients. I want to find a way to use that massive list, but I'm not sure how to go about it. So it depends how you got those emails, right? So you got to be very careful how you collect the data and how you use it, etc. And the thing is, is what if you've generated it for clients, you don't want to start using their data that they've paid you for. So I would be very careful about that. I'm not a legal expert, but I would never use like the leads that my clients have collected because that kind of belongs to them. And it doesn't belong to me, right? So, so just be really careful about that. Tim Parker was asking about an opt-in before people actually book. So when people book in the call, do we have some sort of opt-in? I've already shown that in this video. And Deal Fantic said, do you think the dog niche is good for a blog? I don't know anything about dogs, but I'm very eager to learn. Thanks in advance. So the thing that I would say, right, is like niche sites, they can still make money, but it's harder than ever, right? So if you're going to build out a new site and say the dog's niche, number one, get your keyword research right and check out the free keyword research videos that I have on YouTube, plus my free course. But additionally, I would look at building a real business, right? So econ business is obviously going to work really well in the dog niche. If you go on to Ahrefs, for example, and we check out like dogsit.com, you can see how well, I mean, it's, it's basically a vertical line at this point, right? You can see how well they've done since the Google update and they're performing better than ever. So it's possible to rank in the dog niche. I think it's very competitive. So you want to find an angle in terms of, okay, are you going to go after a certain dog breed, for example? 
And then just make sure that you're actually building something very profitable on top of that. So e-com, for example, is going to be safer, more stable, and actually build a real business versus, say, just going after like niche and affiliate stuff that is very volatile with SEO these days. So thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.